In today's English lesson, you are going to learn at least 20 ways Americans use English phrasal verbs when they talk about traveling. And I am on my way to the airport right now. Yeah, I have to walk to the airport, but let's talk about head to. Head to. That's probably the first phrasal verb we should talk about. Right now, I'm heading to the airport. It's, it's over there somewhere. Americans will say heading to when they are trying to get to a place. Eventually, I will head to Brazil and I would like to take you along with me, but we have to get to the first airport first. And that is called the Portland International Jetport in Maine. The next English phrasal verb I would like to teach you is drop off. Earlier this morning, my daughter dropped me off at a restaurant called Panera Bread and she dropped my wife off at school. That means you drive somewhere with somebody, but one of the people stays at some other place. So this morning, my daughter dropped me and my wife off because we didn't want to have to pay for long-term parking at the airport. We are not going to have a car here and probably save a, a couple hundred dollars because we will be gone for 10 days. I don't know how much it costs to park at the airport for long-term parking, but that is not something we have to worry about. I guess I could have taken the bus here because there is a bus stop right here. Right over here is the runway or some people say tarmac. This is where the airplanes take off and land. It looks like an airplane is coming down the runway right now. Yeah, you'll hear tarmac every so often, but I think most Americans call it just the runway. They definitely do not want people to be running onto the runway. Here we have something called a chain link fence. Up there is barbed wire. And behind the fence is a big concrete wall. So if a plane was taking off right now, we wouldn't be able to see it. But take off is the English phrasal verb we use when the airplane leaves the ground. When an airplane comes back down to the ground, we will probably use the verb land. The plane landed on the runway at one o'clock, but you might also hear touchdown. Luckily that concrete wall comes to an end. So if a plane does take off or land, we could see it. Touchdown can be a little tricky because in the game of football, we just call it football here, you might know it as American football. You can score a touchdown in that game. It's worth six points. But when we're talking about planes, oh, hey, there's a plane. I didn't even see that plane. Ah, it's getting too far away. I don't think we can see it, but that airplane is taking off from the airport. You might hear the phrasal verb lift off, but that doesn't really apply to airplanes probably more like space shuttles. And a lot of times liftoff is used as a noun. You might hear, we have liftoff. Somebody might say that when a space shuttle is launched. Let's take a look at this sign right here, passenger terminal. Terminal is just another name where people wait for their plane, but departing passengers means you are leaving from this airport and arriving, well, just means you're arriving here, you're getting here. Oh no, as I'm walking, I see something pretty concerning, making me happy that I don't have to leave a car here. So if you are just dropping somebody off, you can pay by the hour, so it is $2 an hour, but long-term parking is $14 a day, and they're full. So garage is probably well, I'll show it to you. Surface is probably on the first floor. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Man, if I had to drop my car off here, I don't think I would be able to keep it here. Both of the parking lots are full. 
The hourly parking is great for if you are dropping off a passenger. Like you can leave within an hour or two. You're not leaving your car here. And this airport is super convenient for me. I probably live 30 minutes away. So if I got into a car right now and drove, it would only take me 30 minutes to get here. And it's super small and it's hardly ever busy. Unlike the airport I will be flying to later, JFK in New York City, JFK and NYC. Yeah, so about that parking garage thing, I think the surface just means the first floor. I'm not sure, but the parking garage is over there. We're getting ready to take off. All right, we made it to New York City. We are at an airport called JFK, but we made it here so early that our gate, where we catch our plane, which is B41, we've made it here so early it's not even our flight. There is another flight going to Amsterdam. So we have a layover here in New York, which means we have several hours to wait before we can get our flight to Sao Paulo. And then we have another layover in Sao Paulo because our final destination is Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. All right, just a few more hours until we leave, but Sao Paulo, Brazil is on the board. We have something called a red eye, which, we, which means we are doing most of our flying at night. So hopefully we will be able to sleep and hopefully the next morning our eyes are not red because we didn't sleep all that much. All right, we are just about to board our plane to Brazil. Let's talk about the English phrasal verb settled in. That means when you get to a place and you want to get comfortable. So right now I am settled into my seat. It seems like we have about a 10 hour flight to Brazil. I think they are going to dim the cabin lights. Those are the lights in the plane. And uh, we might be able to get a little bit of a snooze. It's another way to say, get some sleep. Well, we made it to Sao Paulo, but this airport is massive. It has taken us probably one hour to get from one side of the airport to the other. We did have to go through customs. I should say that the Brazilian passport control was a lot nicer than the Canadian passport control I had to go through last summer when I went to visit Bob the Canadian. Yeah, this woman was very nice. She didn't ask me that many questions. In fact, I think she just asked me one. Are you here for business or are you here for pleasure? I said, well, I'm here for pleasure. I'm here for a vacation. I do have one small bone to pick with the Brazilian government. When you have one small bone to pick, it means you're a little mad. Well, Jamie and I both got visas because the day we arrived was supposed to be the first day the Brazilian government required a visa from American citizens, but the day we arrived, they said, eh, we are going to push it back a year. That is a, an English phrasal verb. That means just, we're not gonna do it now. We're gonna do it later. So they pushed it back one year. We still had to pay for our visas. About $180 in total, no, $160 in total. Okay, we made it to our gate. I'm going to find a quiet place or I can talk to you for a little bit. Hey, if you don't know Portuguese, Brazil, it's going to be tough. Um, I thought at the airport, I might be able to just get by with my English, but a lot of people who work here at the airport, 
uh, don't know English, which is fine. I'm in Brazil. I should, oh, there's music over here. I should know Portuguese, right? I don't, not well at all, but um, it's going to be hard. If you're trying to learn English and hopefully your English is getting better every day, but if you come to Brazil, be prepared to do a lot of hand signals uh, because yeah, not a lot of English. One lady was super mean to me. I was just asking where our gate was. She didn't even want to use Google Translate with me. So I tried to be nice, but she was not nice. We had a long flight overnight. Uh, we're both tired. We're both going to be happy when we can get to our hotel, but we have a driver meeting us at the hotel. So I paid a little extra money to have some peace of mind. It's a term we use in English when you do something, it might be a little harder or it might be a little extra, but it won't be that much trouble. And so what I did for a little peace of mind is I paid a little extra money, excuse me, the monster, paid a little extra money to have a driver meet us and take us, take us to our hotel. And he will also drive us to our hotel when we are ready to go back home. And the weather outside the terminal here in Sao Paulo, really cloudy, not great for beach weather. Hopefully it will be a little sunnier in Rio de Janeiro. One other thing, if you plan on visiting Brazil, when you go into the bathroom, you are going to notice a trash can by the toilet. Yeah, you're not supposed to flush the toilet paper down the toilet. It might clog the toilet. That's the verb we use when the toilet stops flushing. So yeah, just uh, throw away your toilet paper in the trash can or the trash bin next to the toilet. While I wait for my plane to show up at the gate, I think I have about an hour, let me teach you a couple more English phrasal verbs because at the beginning of the lesson I said we would talk about 21. I might not get to 21, but how about this one? Look forward to, look forward to. I booked this flight to Brazil last January. Right now, it's April. So I have been looking forward to this vacation for quite a while. When you use looking forward to in English, that means something is in the future, but you want it to happen. You're probably very excited for it to happen. You are probably looking forward to the day when you can speak English confidently. I hope that day has come for you. If not, keep working hard. The next one is catch up. Now, Jamie and I have been traveling for almost 24 hours, and one thing we are looking forward to is catching up on our sleep. So catching up means you're behind in something, you're not quite where you should be, but you make a better effort to try to get there. Maybe you need to catch up on your English work. Maybe you had three papers due this week and you've only done one. So you have to do those last two pretty quickly. You need to catch up on your work. And catch up sounds a lot like the condiment you might put on a hamburger or a hot dog. Catch up. Yeah, I think they sound exactly the same, but they're spelled really differently. Pay attention to measles signs and symptoms. If you have red spots on your body, fever, including cough, while I was sitting here waiting for my flight, I thought of another English phrasal verb you might be able to use, but it's not just for travel, it's for a wider use. But right now here in Sao Paulo, the clouds are out, it's pretty cloudy, but it's kind of early in the morning. Let's go over to this window so you can see. But I'm hoping the clouds are going to burn off and it will be sunnier later. Let's take a look outside. Yeah, so it's cloudy, still morning, but if you think the clouds might go away in the afternoon, maybe because of the sun, probably not, you can say, I hope the clouds burn off before I go to the beach this afternoon. Still waiting for my plane, so let's go back over to this quiet spot because I would like to teach you the term jet lag. 
Jet lag happens when you go far away from your home and the time changes. Now, I'm far away from my home now, about 4,000 miles away, I think, but it's only like an hour later here. So right now it's 10 o'clock in Brazil and it's nine o'clock where I live, nine o'clock in the morning. There wasn't much of a time difference. But if I were to go to say China, where there is a 12 hour time difference, I would probably experience jet lag. Jet lag is when you arrive at a place and the time is very different than what you're used to. It may take you a couple days to acclimate to the new time zone. Acclimate, it's a really advanced English word, just meaning to adjust, to get used to. All right, we just arrived in Rio and hopefully our driver, Victor, will be waiting for us. He's from Rio, we go, and he is going to be taking us right to the hotel. He speaks English too, which is super convenient. Ah, familiar restaurant, good old Burger King. Me, the Victor. Yes. How are you? Hi, nice to meet you, Brett. Nice to meet you too. Hello. This is Jamie. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Perfect. You're welcome. Okay, I'll just stay back here. I think <laughs> it's a good angle. Uh, what are, are seatbelts mandatory here? Or yes. oh, really? I thought Rio didn't have too many rules. <laughs> Put something calmer. Because when I'm alone, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. some heavy metal. Oh, good. What? If we don't listen to any music, that'll be good, too, because... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> YouTube doesn't like music. Yes, I, I know, I know. You know, there's a funny uh, story. There's a guy in Sao Paulo that he does, you know, he went, he goes to stores you know, when some people make a complaint and he kind of like argue with the owner. Yeah. And he, he got very famous, you know, on TV because of that. And then the people from the stores, they started putting Disney music on their stores. Oh. So he wouldn't film it. That'll shut him down. I don't think the seatbelt works, does it? Is it possible? I think you're putting it in the wrong one. Oh. In there. Gotcha. Oh, it works. Thanks. So how far of a drive is it to our hotel? Uh, you change your hotel rates. No, that's just for the one uh, coming back. Yeah, <laughs> Copacabana. So to, here to Copa, no traffic, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, to Baja, it depends, you know, it can be around 45, 50. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, the traffic, you know. Yeah. Rio's traffic is crazy, especially like morning. Uh, from Copacabana to the airport, not so much because you, most of the time you'll be, you know, morning, you'll be coming against the traffic, but mm -hmm. at night can be anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Wow. And from Baja, uh, the work can be close to two hours, you know, and with heavy traffic, like with rush hour, morning rush, and depending on the, you know, uh, afternoon rush hour. Uh, if you want to visit the Christ, go yeah. by the train and book it uh, online, you know, for a specific time. Yeah. Because if you try to buy, uh, you know, at the moment, you know, on the ticket booth, mm -hmm. you know, you'll probably be facing like a two hour line or three hour line. So oh, it's wow. much easier to go like the day before, buy it online and have it ready. You know, okay. Online. These guys on motorbikes are going to cause an accident too. Uh, it's so common. You know, here they're allowed to drive between the cars as long as the traffic is not moving or it's very slow. Okay. But the thing is, they do it even if the traffic is moving fast. They, they just do whatever they want. <laughs> oh, is this what the holdup is? Maybe that van broken down, I guess.
How long have you lived in Rio? Uh, most of my life, I guess. Yeah. I was born in a city close to Rio that's like like 80 miles from Rio. But my family came to, to Rio so I could, you know, study, you know. It was a very, very small city called Mangarachiba. Okay. Beautiful city. Uh, but it's, it's a, basically like a fisherman city, you know, very a fisherman town, like 10,000 people. Right. Everyone knows each other. Like, <laughs> Do you go back often? Nah. No. Still have some, you know, family over there, but like if I go once a year, yeah, that's oh, okay. Gotcha. That's pretty much it. Do those vendors ever get hit in the middle of the road like that? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. And sometimes they create the traffic so they can sell. Oh. <laughs> I've seen them putting cones, you know, just blocking like two, three lanes just to funnel people. Really? To create the traffic. <laughs> like there's a castle over there or something. Yep. That's the Fio Cruz. That's a, a research center for vaccines. Oh, really? Yeah. They, they produce most of the vaccines for COVID for Brazil. Just a curiosity, because you don't see this in the US, these blue things on top, mm -hmm. these are water reservoirs mm. that the houses have. It's not rainwater, it's just we store water on our homes. Because it's sort of somewhat common uh, for us to be, you know, a year at least like four or five days without water for some reason. So we have a, you know, at least like four or five days of water on top of the house. I see. Um, this place here that looks like a stadium, you see here? Yeah. On the right. That's a cultural meeting place for people from the northeast Brazil. So if you want to eat cheap and eat well, yeah, that's the place. They don't, you know, most of them don't speak English, but the food there is amazing. sun-dried meats in the restaurants over there that's you know it's just amazing okay oh no i just realized i didn't record an outro to that english lesson so thank you to victor from rio we go i cannot recommend them highly enough there is a link in the description if you ever come to rio and want to use their services thank you so much for watching if you're looking for more english there's an English lesson I filmed with my brother in about a foot of snow.